subscribe to Nation Next YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get regular updates from Nation Next. When we talk about the bazaar, a lot of people do get confused. I had a very young son. He's not young anymore. But when he was young, he used to ask me, Daddy, bazaar, bazaar, kya hota hai? Kya din par bazaar bolte rehte ho? So I told him, son, markets are places where there are two kinds of people. There are people with tajurba or experience, and there are people with money in the marketplace. And what happens when the bull market gets over is that the people with money end up getting the tajurba, and the people with tajurba end up getting the money. So <laughs> I'm hoping to speak to you today in the voice of tajurba. I have lots of tajurba, I have lots of hair gone, so I have a lot of that to offer you. So let me speak to you with some sense of first what some of the lessons I've learned in the financial markets. To understand where we are in the context, we need to know where we've been. And let me show you some of the great bull markets in history. And from the lows to the highs, how much they've gone up, how many years it took to go up, and how many times it has gone up. So if you look at, say, uh, the Dow in, after post-World War II, it went up from 162 to 995. So about 6x in a period of almost 15, 20 years. This is my most favorite bull market after that, is the Nikkei. When Japan hosted the Olympics in 1960, it used to be a third world country. People didn't know the products it made, and was very skeptical about even hosting the Olymp Olympics. The Nikkei index went from 1,357 to almost 39,000, a 30x move in the index itself over a period of 25 years. By the time the bull market ended, Japan was a member of the G5, Toyota, Sony had become household names, and the whole country had become from a third world country to probably the third largest economy in the world. So the Japanese bull market is always the gold standard of bull markets in equity. And remember that the Japanese yen also went up from 360 to almost 100 to the dollar. So if you look in yen terms, it went up not 30x, but almost 100x. The index went up 100x. Our own Sensex, 89 to 92, went from 700 to 4,500, six and a half time move on the index in a period of about four or five years. Um, oil went from 33 to 140. There's always a bull market going on somewhere in the world. Uh, the NASDAQ itself in 2000, in the 92 to 2000 TMT bull market went from 350 to 5,000, a 14x move. Today the NASDAQ is even over that limit, it's around 8,000. Our own Sensex in 2000, went from almost 5,000 to 20,000, a forex move. So this bull market, which I date to August 2013, began at 17,000, right? So it's not even, it's barely doubled from that level. So if you go by historical precedent at least, this is still a young bull market, all right? So what it seems to me, it's a major correction in a bull market, not necessarily the top of a bull market. If you start saving in your 20s, all right? or your 35s, or at 40, but you save double the amount every year. Look at the difference that happens when you approach retirement age. Look at the amount of difference. These two are Karishma and Karina. They're actually sisters in real life. All right. So let's say Karishma is the hardworking one. She likes to uh, save and invest her money early. So she starts saving when she's 18 years old. Karina is the fun one. She wants to have a good time, go out, party, buy clothes, travel. So she starts saving when she's 25 years old. Karishma stops saving when she is 25 years old. So she saves for a period of eight years. Karina saves the rest of her life. Till 62, she saves every year. How much do they save? 50,000 rupees a year. 50,000 rupees her saal karte. But what a difference it makes because Karishma started early. And then when she's 40 years old, she has 55 lakhs, 52.25 crores. When 60, she has 12.8 crores. Whereas Karina, who saved for 40 years, ends up with only half the amount. So, jaldi shuru karne ka itna advantage hai. Compounding is so great an advantage when you start early. So, the one lesson I'd like these young people here to take away from you is start investing early. Even small amounts invested early make a huge difference 10, 20, 30 years down the road. Let me put it in, in words that you will understand. Most of us will have a career of about 30 years. 30 years in the financial markets, 30 years as an architect, 30 years as a doctor, a professional career, 30 to 40 years come there. Let's say 30 years are there. Let's say you start off life when you're 25 and you get you save your first 10 lakhs. Aapne 10 lakh save kar diya. Kaise bhi mehnat karke 10 lakh bacha diya aapne. Now you're able to double your money every three years. All right? Every three years you're able to double your money. The index itself goes up 16%, right? So to double your money, you need to do about 21, 22% a year. It's not that hard. If you double your money every three years, 
in a 30 year career you will have 10 doubles in your life 10 times your uh, money you will have 10 doubles in your life so suppose you start with 10 lakh rupees all right 10 lakh rupees in a 25 when you're 55 can any young person tell me if you double your money every three years what will that amount become Yeah, you're a CA or someone, yeah, you know all that stuff. He's right, okay? He's right. It becomes 100 CR. How does it become 100 CR? Let's do the math. Because it's always fun. I know you know this, but it's still fun, okay? 10 lakhs after three years becomes? If you double your money, 20, right? 20 becomes? 40 becomes? 80 becomes? Now let's round it off. Say it becomes 3. 3. That's after 5 years. Uh, 15 years becomes 3, right? Now see what happens in the next 15 years. 6, 12, 50, 100. 100. Think about it. If you have 100 crores that even in today's depreciated rupee, that's about 10, 15 million dollars. That puts you in the richest 1% in the world. Forget in India. It'll make you the richest 1% in the world. All right? What have you done? You bought businesses that have doubled every three years. All right? Are these opportunities there? I think Madhu put up a chart. I mean, there must be 100 stocks that have done better than that over the last few years, right? Is it simple? No. Is it easy? No. But you, making money is not easy. I mean, all of you work 8 hours, 10 hours, 15 hours a day for a living, right? So making money is not easy. But if you find a great business that can double for you every three years, so people ask me that maybe I was lucky when I and Madhuji invested in our career, we, we had long-term capital gains exemption, right? So you could build a capital tax-free. But the trick of the matter is even you can, because unless you sell your stocks, there's no capital gains. So try and find businesses that last not three years, but six years, or 18 years, or 24 years. Because as the money grows, as the value of the share grows, the business remains tax-free for all of you. I'll tell you a story which really um, drove the point home. When my son, who was 12 or 13, we had one of those name ceremonies for him, correct? So we had invited 200 people as proud parents, and his grandparents gave him cash. Someone bought sweets, someone bought toys, someone bought, uh, you know, clothes for the young person. I think as parents, we must have also given him some clothes. One of my friends gave him some shares rather than this thing, all right? He gave him, at that time, it was worth 25,000 rupees, 500 shares or something he gave him. Almost like it was an afterthought as a present. He played with the toys, wore the clothes, enjoyed the sweets. The shares were put away in the locker. 25,000 rupees. The shares turned out to be HDFC Bank. All right? So today that 500 shares have become 2,500 shares. 2,500 shares times 2,000 rupees. You do the math what it's worth today. This kid is barely 30 and he already has such an amount of wealth because one of our friends was wise enough to give him an appreciating asset and not a depreciating asset. <clears throat> the trick about buying, as Madhuji said, when you buy a stock, is think ek dhanda aap. Don't think you're buying a price fluctuation. Say you bought 1,000 shares of HDFC Bank. Think you're a part owner of the bank. Then you will think differently as opposed to say, Bees mein leke mein bez diya mein Because then you're fluctuating on the price. You want to be a trader, that's fine. You want to build wealth, as Bajate says, then you got to buy, invest in a business. I explained to you the power of compounding, compounding, compounding. If there's one lesson that the younger people should take away from here, is there's magic in compounding. If you understand what compounding is, it can change your life. Trust me when I say that 10 lakhs becomes 100 crores sounds silly to most young people. How does that happen? My father works all his life. You know, he's not got anything amount like that. But that is the mathematics of it. You go run a spreadsheet on it. Take 10 lakhs compounded about 22, 23% and see what that money becomes in 30 years. Math doesn't lie. It becomes 100 crores. The trick is finding the businesses that can compound at such a great rate for you. India grows at night. You know, all these people who get very bearish on India, you know, mandi ho gaya, ye sarkar ne ye nahi kiya, rupee depreciate ho gaya. You know, we are blessed. We have 125 crore people in our economy, okay? Agar aakhe band bhi kar le na, to chhetaka GDP growth aane wali hai. There's nothing, no government can stop that. That's going to happen. If you have a good government, we'll grow at 10%. If you have a bad government, we'll grow at 7%, right? So India grows at night. It doesn't matter. Raad bhar kaam chalta rehta hai in mein. So India will keep growing. And a growing economy means growing profits. Growing profits means growing stock market valuation. As companies find and aspire to newer markets, newer niches in retail, in 
cement, in pharmaceuticals, enormous amount of wealth is going to be created. Look what happened in India in the last 25 years of my career, okay? From Mrs. Gandhi being assassinated to the NBFC trouble. So suppose I came to India in 1989 and you told me that you're coming the rupees about 20 to the dollar, it will go to 80 to the dollar. Uh, there'll be Kargil wars, there'll be plagues in Surat, uh, there'll be a nuclear bomb blast, there'll be a Y2K, there'll be a tech meltdown, there'll be a tsunami. I would have said, I'm going back, I don't want to invest in this Indian market. And yet, all these things have happened, all right? Governments have come and gone, the rupee is depreciated, calamities have hit the Indian uh, market, people have boycotted parliaments, governments have come and gone. And still, the index which started 800 when I, my career started is today closer to 30,000 plus, right? So that's what I mean by India grows at night. Kuch bhi hota hai, things happen bad. But because you are blessed with having a market of 125 crore people, all right? Opportunities are greater today than they've ever been. Bull markets equal big money. The greatest money is made when a bear market is getting over and a bull market starts. Because I told you bull markets go up 3x, 5x, 6x. So BCR index, 100,000 ho jata index, okay? So the big money is made in the big swing in the market. So you got to get into the bear market, be ready there. Values will emerge there, buy it, and don't make 10, 20 rupees and sell it. Because you're shortchanging yourself. As Madhu Babu pointed out, Bajaj Finance can go up 400x. HDFC Bank can go up 1,000x. Infosys goes up 2,000x, all right? These opportunities are in finding those great companies. So you need to spend time understanding whether it's a bull market, and if it's the beginning of a bull market, you understand that great opportunities lie ahead of you. Someone asked me, when the index started in 800, now it's 36,000, now we're trying to So I asked the wisest friend I know in the stock market, who happens to be also the founder of DMART. I just happen to be on the board of DMART, the founder of DMART. Uh, and we, he was asked the same question by another group of youngsters. And someone asked him, what is the best investment time in his career? He's seen a 50-year investment career. He's seen, as someone said, the Muraji Desai Dividend Scrapping Act. He's seen the liberalization of Manmohan Singh. He's seen the tech boom in India. He says, what was the best investment decade in your investing career? And without blinking, he said, the next 25 years. The opportunities in the next 25 years are greater because we have a market, we are a democratic country, we have skill sets, we understand the value of economic reform, so the opportunities ahead of us are far greater than the opportunities behind us, as great as the opportunities were behind us, all right? So please, I don't know, don't take my word from it. Whom I consider one of the best investors in India, one of the best entrepreneurs in India, says that the opportunities in the next 25 years are greater than the last 25 years. So having spoken about the last 25 years, now let me share with you the next 25 years, how to invest for the next 25 years. I am from Bombay, I am not but Bombay, what is the status in Bombay? Which school do you get your kid to, ma'am? That's very important. Where, which admission your school? So in Nagpur, I know you just go to Preeti ji and request her. She gives you admission. Um, which club you're a member of? And do you have a parking spot? Parking spot is very hard in society society. Right? So in my building, for example, where I stay in South Bombay, parking spot might go from anywhere from 50 lakhs for an open spot like this to 75 lakhs for a garage. So it's more than the cost of the car, so you know, whatever. You figure that out. So the question I have to you is what do you think this parking spot will be worth in 25 years? I think Madhuji gave you a clue. Yeah, he's saying zero because he's my mama, so he knows <laughs> what I think. I think so it's going to be worth zero. Now this is a pretty radical thing for me to say. But let's see, let's, let's make the case for it, okay? The point being that technology is changing the way as you think. And it's very important for investors to keep adapting to technology as it's changing. Take a look. This is New York City, Fifth Avenue, 1900, at the turn of the century. If you look closely, this picture is not a very high resolution picture because we didn't have high resolution cameras. Sub Ghoda Gadi. There's no cars, there's only Ghoda Gadis out there, okay? 1900, only Ghoda Gadi. What happens 13 years later? All cars. Same street, same city. No Ghoda Gadis, only cars. In 13 years, the Ghoda Gadis gave way to the internal combustion engine. All right? So all those people who say that the electric car won't happen, it's too fanciful, should look at this picture and think, in 13 years, we moved completely from horse to a horseless carriage. Let's take another market. 
Does anyone know, any young person know, which was the most dominant name in photography in 2000? It's Kodak. It was the most company. There's another company called Polaroid, which made instant cameras. They're the most dominant company today. What's the price of Kodak today? What's the stock price of Kodak? Does anyone know? It's bankrupt. Zero. It's gone bankrupt. Kodak, the most dominant company in the world in photography, 15 years back, is bankrupt today. Polaroid, bankruptcy. All right? The two most prominent companies. Now let me ask you, why did they go bankrupt? Do we don't click photographs? I see people here clicking photographs all the time. We click more photographs per capita today than we did in 2000. But why? They didn't keep up with the times. Right? They didn't understand that people want to click photographs in a mobile phone and not necessarily print it out. At the heart, Kodak and Polaroid were chemistry companies. They believed in the magic of processing photographs and getting it done in an album and keeping it there. They didn't believe in the social media revolution that took place. Believe me, Kodak and Polaroid had patents done on photographs to be kept on phone and a hard disk, but they didn't believe in that because it was run by companies, chemists, who thought they self in small photography market, not necessarily in the social expressions market. And because of that, they went bankrupt. So we've seen two industries before I, all right? Horse carriage and uh, photography go bust. So here's something that uh, an OPEC minister said, and this is funny when I'm saying this now, because the biggest worry in the Indian market is the price of oil. And I am self among the people who say that if oil were to drop $10, an ounce uh, a barrel, index will be back to 11,700, right? But he said the Stone Age didn't end because they ran out of stones. Think about it, very profound words. The Stone Age didn't end because they ran out of stone. Technology progressed beyond stones, all right? So the oil age as a corollary will not end because there's no longer oil. So even though oil is now troubling the Modi government, troubling your wallet, troubling the country, troubling the rupee, you can sense that the end of oil is near us. Why is the end of oil coming here? Because it will be undone by smartphone apps, long life batteries, simple gearing. Internal combustion engine, which used to power all the oil, will now give way to the integrated circuit. And what's at stake here is $10 trillion worth of economic output. That's what the global auto industry is worth, $10 trillion. And with it, the future of so many sectors, auto, auto insurance, infrastructure, auto ancillary is at stake. Let me explain to you what I mean, then I explain to you. Once you go to electric vehicles, you don't need oil to run them. They'll be running on battery power, right? So what is the cost differential between a current auto and electric vehicle? If you just go through the numbers, they're pretty staggering. You replace the ignition in your car, $400, cost zero in it because you don't have ignition in an electric vehicle car. Uh, how many parts do you have in a current auto? 20,000. How many in an electric train? 20. Uh, what is the cost of a driver in India? $400. You know, 25,000 rupees like that in Bombay at least. Uh, a driverless car? Zero. Car drives itself, right? Cost of parking? I put 25 lakhs very charitably. It's more like 50 to 75. Zero. What's going to happen when you have an electric car? Suppose all of you come here for this seminar. You'll all take out your smartphone apps, punch in a few numbers out there. A car will come pick you up, take you wherever you want, and go pick up the next person. You won't actually own a car. So if you don't own a car, why would you want a parking spot? Just useless. Think about it. We use a car maybe 10-15% of the time. Most of the time, you go to the office, go to the grocery store, it's parked there. Right? You don't use the car. Once electric cars come in, there'll be no accidents. People will just order it like a fleet. Button the way, gaadi aage, chhodo, bhaar jao. It won't matter. It's not like we generate our own electricity, you know. We just use the electricity of the grid. So we use fleet cars. So if you want to ride a car, if you like the experience of riding a car, just like you want to ride a horse, you go to the horse track and run a horse there. You don't go out on the street and ride a horse. The same way will happen with um, uh, electric car. You, if you want to drive a car, you want to, get, you want to feel like a young man again driving a car, Go to a racetrack, drive a car. You only drive it on the road. It will be driverless, it will be electric, and it will be cheap. Right? So everyone will live wherever they want, commute wherever they want. There will be very few accidents because they're all software driven. So they will tell, keep six inches distance between the car. Don't have accidents. So if accidents drop it down, no auto insurance is there. If uh, 
all cars follow one another. You don't need six-lane highways. You could have two-lane highways and do it. The profound investment implications. I found this study that out of, in the 90 years of the U.S. stock market, 25,000 companies were traded, all right? And uh, in that period, the Dow has gone from 166 to 25,000. And yet only 4% of the 1,000 companies have accounted for all that gain. So in a market as mature as the U.S., only 4%. So people who say stock market picking is not important, kuch bhi lelo, bhar jayega. It happens sometimes, but over long periods of time, it's very important to pick the right stocks. So the question for you here is, during this period from 1926 to 2015, which was the best performing stock in America? And how much did it go up? Yeah, sir. General Electric, okay. Few more guesses. Amazon. Amazon wasn't listed in 1926. If it was, it probably would be, but... Apple. Yeah, there are a lot of Apple fans, huh? Again, it's not listed that long. It's been a great stock, but not as a... Microsoft. Again, not listed. 1985 got listed. Huh? Coca-Cola? Berkshire? Who said Berkshire? Good, 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 good. Getting closer, but not quite there. Huh? Ford? Exxon Mobil, these are all good guesses. I mean, you all are coming very close. But the best stock has been Philip Morris, cigarette maker. The two best stocks in the world in any market I have found are, no, Google got listed only in 2000 sometime. The two best stocks in the world, almost any market, okay, are the sin stocks, liquor and tobacco. All right. What is the best stock in Japan? Japan, American tobacco. What is the best stock in Britain? Diageo and BAT. What is the best stock in India over the last 30 years? ITC, right? So, for whatever reason, these are habit-forming events. So, these stocks have done the best. How much was Philip Morris up in the 90 years? How many times was it up? Madhuji was telling me that stock was 100 or 200 or 400. How much was Philip Morris up? 2,000 times also. There you go. 2,000. How much is Philip? This is in dollar terms, huh, by the way. It's not in rupee terms. In dollar terms, how much was Philip Morris up? Two million times. Two million times. This including dividends. All right. But the point is that, and cigarette consumption has fallen in America. Okay. People don't want to smoke cigarettes. Okay. But sit. The characteristics of a powerful business are such that even in a shrinking market, they keep raising their prices. Tax bada or prices bada dete. You know, governments can't ban them because they get too much revenue from it. So, this uh, inelastic demand, the smokers will want to smoke. I'm sure Bharat Daslo Khadeya will be still smoking. So, you know, it has created a huge amount of value for investors. All right? I'm not in the business of telling you what stocks to buy. I mean, I'm okay to buy liquor stocks, tobacco stocks. Some people don't like to buy them. I respect them. But the hard fact is, Philip Morris has been the best stock in India. And of course, Berkshire Hathaway, when I went as a student to America in 1977, I checked that later on, the stock was worth $75 a share. Today, it's something like $300,000. So I wish I had gone to the beach and bought some shares of Berkshire, but I wasn't that smart. So here's a roll of the top 20 stocks over the 90 years. Uh, I put Altria, that's the name of Philip Morris now. It has changed its name to Altria, so that's Altria. But these are some of the names you all mentioned, you knew it. General Motors, ExxonMobil, Apple, um, Merck, Walmart. These are some of the great stocks that have been present over the last 90 years in the financial markets. Your job, ladies and gentlemen, is to find these stocks. Okay? If you find them, they'll double for you every three years, you're rich. This is some of the things I put down as a potential. This is my list. Again, as Madhuwa said, there's no guarantee anything about this. This is our own thought process we do that. Some potential losers are very simple to say. Auto industry, if you go to electric vehicles, auto industry is not going to do well. And again, I say over the next 25 years, I'm not saying over the next two years. Maruti was 10,000 rupees right now. So I'm saying over the next 25 years. Right? Auto ancillary, auto insurance. If you won't need oil, you probably won't need refining that much. They probably won't do well. Textiles, it's become a very commodity business which robots using it. Um, Heavy labor industry, because artificial intelligence is going to take over the component of labor. So there will be dramatic changes in those industries. Some of the things that will do well, liquor and tobacco, as I mentioned to you, these are some of the last 90 years been the greatest stocks. Human habits don't change. People will always 
have some vice in life. That's why these stocks will do well. Gaming, again, people like to gamble for whatever reason. Gaming stocks will do well. I say quick service restaurants because I think this is a young country. People still cook at home. People will start going out to eat. Women will be working outside the house. Airlines, very controversial one, hasn't done well for me. Oil prices have killed them. But ultimately, you'll have electric vehicle cars. But you still need to go to Bombay for a wedding, Pune for a convention, Jaipur for a holiday. And the only way to do it is to fly there, right? So I think airlines will probably do well over time. Update for 2018, I want to leave you with some sort of semblance of what I think is that this seems more like a vicious correction than a bull market top. I think that's the question everyone, I think I disagree with my audience today. Everyone in the audience thinks is that we made a top, Madhubabu. <laughs> you know, I think it's a correction. I hope I'm right and you're wrong. I think I hope the market goes back. I think if oil drops $10, $20, we'll probably be back to 11700 The key variable for the market is corporate governance. Companies with bad corporate governance, what do I mean? Poor results, auditors changing, uh, unnecessary losses, markets slamming those stocks down. So good corporate governance is a key determinant now on what to buy in the market. Leadership still rests with consumer and consumption-oriented stocks. I believe that despite the market now falling and new highs virtually zero, I think over the next three months, individual stocks will start making new highs again. We'll go back. I think the index may not do it for six months, nine months, but I think individual stocks will start making new highs. So that is a sign that the bull market is intact. If individual stocks can't make new highs, then clearly we're entering a bearish market. The festival season is off to a great start. So this Diwali, from what I understand, whether it's Titan or whether it's Two Wheelers or whether it's Textiles, they're all doing well. So that's a good sign. Consumption, purchasing power is good. And market fears are what you know, tariff wars, Fed hike, FI selling, Dow selling, whatever. These all markets will always climb a wall of worry. There will never be a market where there's no nothing to worry about. Subscribe to Nation Next YouTube channel. And press the bell icon to get regular updates from Nation Next. Also like Nation Next Facebook page and follow us on Instagram and Twitter.